Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Welcome to my channel. My name is Maika. Today's video is going to be a video in which I'm going to be ranking my purple eyeshadow palettes. And I have 19 palettes in total that I would be possibly, like, which I could possibly categorize as a purple palette, but I thought 19 would be a bit much. So I've selected a couple that I'm, I won't be featuring in the ranking, but that I will be showing you at first. And I will tell you why I'm not featuring them in the ranking, mainly because they aren't all that purple or because I just don't want to talk about them. But we have a couple of palettes here, 14 in total, that I will be ranking from my least favorite purple palette all the way to my favorite purple palette. And that's pretty much what this video is going to be all about. So I really hope you enjoyed watching the video. And for the occasion, I am wearing a bit of purple lipstick. I decided to go for a slightly different eye look today. And I was like, I want to put something purple in my look. So I put on a purple lipstick. So let me talk about these palettes first. These are the five palettes that I selected to not feature in the ranking, mainly because they are either palettes I've already done uh, videos with before. I've done a purple palette video all the way back in like 2018 so I can link that in the eye above in case you would like to see my take on those uh, because that's when I feel purple palettes really started to become a thing um, and I have expanded the collection quite a bit and I feel there are just better purple palettes out there than the five I'm holding here. Uh, so if you saw my recent videos then you know that I've reorganized all of my ColourPop nine pen palettes and one that was definitely a casualty during that reorganization was the it's my pleasure this now contains completely different shades because i have kept the shades that i love the most put them in other ColourPop nine pans because the it's my pleasure just wasn't never really a purple palette to me it was more like a plummy mauve and it pulled quite pink toned and it had lots of warm tones as well. So that's why for me, it was just never in my brain as a purple palette, even though the packaging might suggest otherwise, which is why this palette isn't going to be featured because it's not the original palette anymore and I just wasn't liking it all that much. Now Blush Tribe is a brand that is no longer available, so I felt uncomfortable ranking it, even though I think there may be a few palettes here that are harder to find or that might be difficult to get your hands on. But still, I wanted to show this to you. But this, of course, is not a purely purple palette. It has some purples here, but then it also has the blues and greens. I actually think that later in the year I may want to do like blues, greens, purple palettes all in one go, and then I might feature this a bit more heavily. Uh, but yeah, this is a very unique palette in my makeup collection, so I did want to show that real quickly. Also not in the ranking is the Natasha Denona Lila palette. Again, one of those palettes that, that just comes in purple packaging, but then when you actually look at the color story, you really only get three purples. So I felt it wasn't purple enough to go into a purple palette ranking video for that reason. It's mainly neutrals. Yeah, and what I do like about this palette though is that it goes from like cool toned into warm toned into full on neutrals. That's why I have this palette, even though I did switch this, uh, the shade that was originally here called De Dragon Bite. I did switch it with the yellow tone gold that's in the center of the gold palette. Uh, so I did switch some shades around there. Then in my original purple palette video, I already showed you this, the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk. And this is another one of those palettes that when purples became a thing, this was touted as a purple palette, but essentially you really only get one true purple and then you get some things to make a little bit of a plummy look. You could definitely create a purple look with this, but I feel again, it's not purple enough to go into a purple ranking video. And a purple palette that is purple enough, but we all know how I feel about this brand and you know, the fact that I'm not featuring any of this stuff in rankings or recommendations. But yeah, just to be fully transparent, I do own the Bloodlust by He Who Shall Not Be Named, but then you know why these aren't going to be making an appearance if you are familiar with my, my eyeshadow palette collection and you know a little bit what's going on there. So let's get to the ranking. So palette number 14 would be the Juvia's Place Nubian Royal. And the reason why I'm putting this in the number 14 spot is quite simple because this is a palette I would never reach for on its own um, for a few reasons. I mainly bought this because I felt it could round out another purple palette from Juvia's Place that is going to be ranked a lot higher, which I felt was perhaps a little bit limiting. And if I just want to add a little bit more oomph to that palette, I can use this. But 
even though it has some really pretty shades. I really like this one, and I really like that shimmer here. It does come with a pressed glitter that really didn't impress me. It was very difficult to pick up. And then you just get some shades that don't really make a lot of sense to me. Um, and the fact that it has this like gradient packaging from the purple until like the orangey yellow shade just kind of throws off the color story, which makes me not want to reach for it. I know it's a bit petty, but that's how I do feel about this palette. So that's why it needs to go in the very bottom of the pile. Also in the bottom of the pile at number 13 is the Catrice Pro Slim Eyeshadow Palette in Lavender Breeze. This is another one of those palettes that has purple packaging, but then when you open it up, you don't really get a lot of purples. However, the reason why I do, do want to feature it here is because it is one of the newer palettes that Catrice has come out with, so I'm pretty sure that some of you might want to know how I feel I would rank this. Since this isn't very purple, it needs to go at the bottom. However, I was able to pull a really stunning purpley leaning look out of this palette. When I first used these shades, they pulled very pinky on me, but I have found that if you just layer this shimmer, layer after layer after layer, you're going to get a really nice, like, lilac-y purple shimmer out of it. So, is this a full-on purple palette? Not necessarily. Is the quality really good? I feel that these, like, the last two that uh, Catrice came out with aren't as good quality as the first three they did. So if you can still get the Generation Nudes or Next Nudes or whatever they're called, those are really nice, but this, I felt, wasn't the same really buttery, smooth, rich quality as that either. So that's why this had to go to the bottom as well. At number 12, we have the Huda Beauty Amethyst Obsessions palette. I have multiple of these Obsession palettes, and some of them are purples, and the other ones are going to come up in a minute. Uh, but this palette was another one of those things that looks purple, but like the, uh, what was it again? Um, the It's My Pleasure from ColourPop, I feel this isn't as purple as it could have been, mainly because these two shades uh, are pretty much identical, and they're more of like a mauve -y shade. I wish what this palette is really missing for me is a matte, royal purple, so something in the vein of this purple. I felt that if the palette would have had that kind of shade, it would have been more purple and it would have been easier to pull this more into truly purple vibes rather than this smoky, mauve plum vibe. So for me, it just wasn't perfect as purple as this looks on the outside. It's just not that purple on the inside, even though it doesn't contain any neutrals like the Catrice does. Um, but yeah, this just wasn't perfect for that reason, why, which is why it goes towards the bottom. Also towards the bottom, but for similar reasons to the Catrice, is the Lime Crime Venus 3. It's another one of those palettes that kind of tricks you into thinking, oh, this could be a purple palette, and you do get purples inside uh, that are really, really pretty. Like, these purples are really lovely, um, but I feel that, again, this palette just suffers from a lot of neutrals with just a pop of purple, which can be really pretty. Um, and I definitely think that combining, for instance, this coral with the purples is a winning look whenever I use this palette. But I did want to feature it here because it's another one of those things where I'm like, hmm, is it all that purple? But that's why it's going towards the bottom. We're moving into the top 10 and the Purple Haze by Huda Beauty, I wanted to list in the number 10 spot, mainly because this palette is even though it's got a couple of neutrals, I was able to pull some really stunning purpley leaning looks out of this. I really like how sort of murky these purples are when you put it on, and it's got the juxtaposition of the warmth with the purples, which I also like. So I do really like this. I like the quality of these little Huda Beauty palettes quite a lot, but as with the entire Haze line, color story-wise, it definitely left me wishing for a little bit more purple. Like, again, just like one more matte, and I would have liked it a lot better. Like this, like, beigey shade in the middle. If that could have been replaced, it would have been much better. But we're very soon getting into very much favorite territory. One of my favorite palettes from Anastasia is the original Norvina, which... I think has been discontinued. I don't think you can still get this. Uh, but the original Norvina was also criticized for not really pr being that purple. Uh, so that's why I'm putting this in a number nine spot. The reason why, even though this has a bunch of neutrals and I definitely feel these two warm tones should have been purples, let's just be honest here, 
Um, I feel that the quality of ABH shadows is just incredibly great, much better than some of the palettes I've already shown you, which is why for me it does get a top 10 status when it comes to purple palettes. And I do really like these two purple shimmers that you get here, uh, Drama and Celestial. Especially Celestial, I, I've used that a lot, but what this palette is also missing for me, like some of the other palettes we've discussed so far, is purple mattes, because Soul, even though it's a really, really pretty shade and I love wearing it, especially as a pop of something on the lower lash line, I feel that the matte row should have included at least one or two purples and then it would have been ranked a lot more higher, like a lot higher in this list than it currently is. Are you ready for some full on purple palettes then? So the midsection of my ranking is very much made up of full on violet, lilac, purple palettes, monochrome, you name it. And I'd like to start us off with number eight, which is Menagerie Cosmetics Violet Ink. Now the palette itself you can no longer purchase. I was lucky enough to snatch one up during the last restock that they did in February. They happened to find a box of like 100 of these palettes and I was like on the website and I was like able to get my hands on it. But here's the good news, you can still buy the shades. So if you really like these shades, you can still buy them as individuals. They just won't come in this packaging. But I really wanted the packaging because that octopus is just great. Um, and my reason for putting this in the number eight spot is because for me, it just wasn't purple enough. Uh, especially these two mattes, just for something that's called violet ink, it, it, just, it just isn't that violet. It's more inky blues. Um, so I felt that really you only get these two purples and everything else pulled very blue on my undertone. It could very well be that because of my cool tone neutral undertone that the blue tones just grab, just show up a lot more. I think that that's, may that's maybe why it didn't really work for me. But, but when I did a look with this, I was surprised by how blue toned the look came out. And um, it was pretty. I really love that purple shimmer in the middle. I definitely do not regret buying this at all. It's stellar quality like I'm used to from Menagerie. But for me, again, could have been a little bit more purple. If, if this would have been a little bit more of an, like less of an indigo and a little bit more of like that middle ground between a navy and a, and a, and a purple, I think it would have made the palette a lot more unique. Number seven then is another Menagerie palette and it's their new Flight Club palette. This was also part of that same Menagerie order. I decided to roll these two palettes into my Shop My Stash so I could try them out for this video so it could give you my thoughts. Uh, so this is definitely very new to me as well. And this is what the color story looks like. And this is definitely purple enough. But here as well, I felt that a lot of the purples were quite warm toned. So again, undertone wise, it wasn't perfect necessarily for my complexion, where the violet ink one is very blue toned. This ended up, especially with this shade here and also this shade here, there was just a lot of warmth that was, I wouldn't call it unflattering on me. It's just, if I get to choose, and that's what we're doing in this ranking, I'm choosing what I love most. Um, then warm tone purples just aren't as flattering on me as for instance something like like these royal purples that it has as well like those are really lovely and I felt as I was using it that this like blur pull and that blur pull over here just they're sort of like renditions of the same shade and I feel that if you only get 12 pans and you're including some neutrals which by the way were lovely um, and you make it a purple palette that perhaps a little bit of variation is better um, than uh, giving a lot of like similar things. So for me, some of the shimmers weren't as unique as it could have been, which is why this is, this is a lovely purple palette in terms of like a monochromatic purple palette. This is probably the best quality one in my entire collection, but I didn't rank it higher, any higher than this because I felt that the undertones in the shadows and the variety in the shimmers just, it, I want it more. Let's just put it that way. I want it more. Number six then is the last Huda Beauty palette in this ranking and it's the Pastel Lilacs. I have heard so many people just dragging these pastel palettes to the ground and like through the mud, I should say. <laughs> um, but when I used this, I was 
really pleasantly surprised with how great quality this was. Possibly because I have such a fair skin tone, this showed up on me really, really well, and it definitely did look purple. And I really like the juxtaposition of the peachy tones with the purples. And where the other palettes I felt could have done with like an extra purple, which I do feel here as well. Like again, that like orangey shade, like whether I use this one or this one, it doesn't really make much of a difference. So I would have liked to swap out one of those shades for perhaps a little bit more depth. That would have been cool, but I feel this is purple enough. The juxtaposition of these neutrally shades with the purples works really well. I thought the quality was really lovely too. Um, it's just, it's pastels and this gives me one look and that's about it. So it's not as versatile as some of the other things that I've got going on in the top five. So let's move on to that. Top five then. So top five time. Can you guess what will be in my top five? What are some purple palettes I own that you haven't seen yet? Lilac You A Lot from Colourpop is my number five pick. This was not perfect. In fact, I put one of my It's My Pleasure shades into this one to make it a bit more purple. So there was a pink tone matte in here that made it very sort of barby pink and I didn't like it. I do like some of these like pinky shimmers that it has. Those are nice inner corner highlights or topper shades. Um, and I do really like the shimmers that came originally in the palette. I felt that this has enough depth. It's not too samey samey. So in terms like of like a pastel-y palette with purples, I think I prefer this a little bit more than the Huda Beauty one, simply because this has a little bit more variety. And now I've put that, pa uh, that purple shade in from the It's My Pleasure. I know this will make for not only lilac looks, but purple looks as well. So that's why I'm super chuffed with this one. And that's why it gets to go into the number five spot. Number four then, I mentioned very, very early on in this video that I have another Juvia's Place palette for you. The Violets from Juvia's, this gets to be in the number four spot because A, it's the Juvia's Place quality that I love and know and adore. Um, it's got just two mattes, four shimmers, it's got the depth, but it has something for me as well that I can use in the crease. And this is that kind of shade that I wished would have been in the violet ink. This is that blue tone matte purple that is the perfect mix of like a navy and a purple, like this really nice midnight blue indigo-y shade. You know that kind of purple that is in the sky when it's like late at night, but you get some like right before it goes super dark? It's really that kind of shade and I love those to deepen things up on the lower lash line to smoke things out. This is just such a versatile little palette with only six pans. This shade in here leans a little bit more neutral but that is sort of like the juxtaposition that I like in terms of having a neutral in a purple palette because you do get five other purples and here you do get the variety in the shimmers that I like and I think that for a six pan palette this is genius. This is genius. And yet it didn't get to be in the top three because I was thinking and I was like, yeah, but if I had to pick a, a palette that has really good quality and gives me purples, I have to feature this. This is the Kaleidos uh, Futurism 6 Lunar Lavender. And not a lot of people like this, but you'll see in a minute that I tend to like palettes that nobody else likes and those are like my favorites. Um, so I've stopped listening to other people who make beauty videos because at the end of the day, I know what I like. And this palette, again, it's got two neutrals which are perfect for my complexion. This in the crease, this to deepen things up. Lovely. And then you just have two matte, lavender-y kind of shades. And for a lot of people, these didn't really show up very well. But for me, possibly because I have such fair skin, uh, this worked really well on me, and I also love these two shimmers that you get. Again, like the Juvia's Place, this is the kind of palette where I'm like, oh, I want to go back to it. Like, I look at this color story now, and I'm like, I want to play with this tomorrow, but 
I still have so many new palettes to go through you guys, which is why you're not getting a purple look in this video today, because I was like, right, I have to finish playing with my blueberry muffin <laughs> before I can do anything else. So that's why this is a palette that just inspires me. It makes me want to use it again. And it's one of my top favorite Kaleidos palettes for sure. And that's why it also had to go into the top three of this ranking. Because can we sense a theme here? Even though I was putting things at the far, far bottom because it had too many neutrals, I do like my purples to come with some neutrals just to make it a little bit more wearable for every day. And we all know how I feel about the Urban Decay Naked line and how wonderful I think these eyeshadows are. If you are someone who works in an office environment or if you go to school and you don't want to wear something too intense, then I think Urban Decay Naked palettes are some of the best that you can try. And I know a lot of people didn't like the Naked Ultraviolet because it has too few purples. And I agree that this could have done with a matte purple. Like you only get that lilac-y shade and huh. But for me, I was able to use purple dust just fine in the crease. And if you just go a little bit beyond what people say, like you need to put a, only mattes in the crease, that's no. If you just play around with these darker shades as liners and putting them on the lower lash line and just playing around with your placement, you can do a full on purple look with this and it will be really, really pretty. Um, I also really like the peachy shades in here. So again, one of the things I appreciated about the lilac pastels from Huda Beauty, I really like how the purples and the peaches really nicely complement yet also juxtapose each other. I feel that blending some of the peaches together with the purples really emphasizes the purples and brings them to life. Whereas if you do a full on purple look with just purples, it can very easily be like a little bit too much. Whereas this gives you the purpliness, but a little bit more toned down, a little bit more wearable, which is what I would like to go for. And I know that a lot of people didn't like Dazed, uh, VR and Lucid, but those are some of my favorite shades in this palette because they are all like duochrome transformery kind of shades. And then again, with some of those purples, yeah, I really like it. So the Naked Ultraviolet had to go into the number two spot exactly for that reason. And then finally, last but not least, the Viseart Violette Etendue. I was like, if there is a purple palette that I love, that I would recommend you try if you want to try purples, it would be this one. It is my number one pick because it's got great quality, it's got a great color story and it gives you everything you could want in terms of like a purple palette in my book. Uh, so this is what the palette looks like. You get six purples and then you get six neutrals, you think. But what I found is that these neutrals all have a purple undertone. So where with a lot of these palettes, the, per the neutrals that come in them are either a bit of a rose gold or they're very orangey or peachy these neutrals are more cool toned leaning. And that's why I feel this is the perfect palette for me because I have a cool to neutral undertone. I have fair skin, so I don't want things to go too deep, even though I do like to have the ability to deepen things up, which this palette gives me. It's got the matte purple that I'm missing in so many of these other palettes. It's got some gorgeous shimmers. This lavendery, taupey kind of goodness I already featured in a video last Sunday where I talked about my favorite one and done eyeshadows. And this is the kind of palette where I feel if I could only have like one palette for an entire month and be able to do not only the really fun, colorful stuff, but also really wearable neutral looks. This gives me, gives me everything I could possibly want. And because these undertones are so perfectly with the purpliness to it, I feel they combine well with the purples and they work really well on my skin tone for that reason. So the quality is stellar too. I really not regret buying this palette at all. It is my favorite for a reason. And yes, you can go full on purple with something like this. I really do appreciate it. But at the end of the day, this just has some warmth and also the neutrals it has pull more warm toned. And for me, what I like 
is to just go for the more cool toned vibe and that's what this palette gives me so that's why this had to go into the number one spot i like the quality a little bit better compared to the urban decay and like i said this does have that purple matte that I feel the Urban Decay is missing, which is why I think it's a little bit more perfect, plus it's just a lot more cool toned. And if that's your jam, cool tones can be really hard to find and a lot of brands don't do them very well. Uh, they, they think that cool tones always have to be grays. Looking at you at BEH Cosmetics, blueberry muffin palette. <laughs> but these are cool tones and yet they aren't that like stark or strange. Like these are more like <sighs> mobby leaning but cool tone mobs rather than more warm tone mobs and that's why I like them a lot plus you do you do get a beige shade but this is just like that's the perfect blend shade for me uh, I don't feel it's super fluous and that's why this palette with just 12 pans super nicely cute curated little palette stunning packaging it just has everything going for it it gives me everything that I would want and that's why it's number one. So yeah, thank you very much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please give a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week over here and I would love to know in a comment down below what your ranking would be. What is your favorite purple palette? Maybe it's one I don't own, who knows? Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.